New polls of South African voters have been released this week and they're predicting a historic historic meltdown for the African National Congress in the upcoming election. And the inventor of the Please Call Me, who's been in this decades-long running saga with Vodacom, had the Supreme Court of Appeal ruled in his favor this week. He could be in line to earn billions, not millions, billions of rands from a settlement with Vodacom if that ruling goes through. And finally, will the EFF be at the State of the Nation address tonight after years of disrupting and storming out and causing trouble? Well, the courts are kind of saying that they're not going to be allowed to be there. It's been another massive week in South African news. And this is our regular Thursday episode of News Worth Knowing, where we catch you up on all the biggest and most consequential stories facing the country for the issue with Dan Corder. Before we get into those big three news stories, I want to let you know that we interviewed Mbali Ntuli yesterday. She, in the last few years since leaving the DA, has been doing incredible work for an organization that she founded that has got thousands and thousands of South Africans to register to vote. It's called Groundwork Collective. And she has the most interesting insights on why South Africans are or are not voting right now. You can get that exclusive interview on our Patreon for a small monthly fee. Subscribers get an expert interview every Every single week, just search Patreon, The Issue with Dan Corder right now. And if you're brand new here and so haven't subscribed to our channel yet, we'd so appreciate a little click to subscribe. It costs you nothing and means the world for us. Right, let's get into news worth knowing on The Issue with Dan Corder. South Africa is a movie. Welcome to the watch party. And just before we start, Bafana won slash lost last night at the Africa Cup of Nations. We don't know because we're recording this on the Wednesday before they face Nigeria in this cataclysmic, massive clash, a bitter rivalry of two great African nations. And so we thought the right thing to do, given that we are going to release this after the semifinal, but we're recording it before it's second place, is to release two versions that we'll put in this video. One where Bafana won and one where Bafana lost. So let's do that now quickly. Just just watch the bit that applies to what happened in the match. And the dog South Africa lost pulled last off night an getting iconic victory last night. Kills you. We should have known that we wouldn't meet Nigeria. We should have known that this Nigeria is Bafana Bafana. They will always let you down. But we game. We sh- All right, now that housekeeping is done. Let's talk about our three big news stories of the week. The first one is polling. So there are lots of polls that come out all the time in democracies that are trying to figure out based on research and interviews and lots of data that they've collected, how people are likely to vote in an upcoming election. And the closer you get to an election, the bigger a deal those polls become. But in the last 48 hours, Ipsos has released a massive poll, a very, very thorough poll. And Ipsos is one of those polling companies that we in South Africa generally look to and go, they usually are getting it right more often than they're getting it wrong. It's very important to understand that political parties will do better or worse based on how many people come out to vote. Now that might sound kind of like, duh, obvious to you, but let me explain that a little further. So basically the overall turnout in an election affects different political parties differently. So for example, in South Africa, we know that the ANC is extremely good at mobilizing its base and getting its hardcore supporters, of which there are so many, millions of them, out to the polls. So on a low turnout, the ANC would do better overall because we know they're going to get their people out, but if the rest of the political parties don't get all their people out, the ANC will do better. But on a medium turnout, the ANC might do a little bit worse because it means that other political parties have done a better job of getting their people out. So this is on a medium turnout. And I will remind you that in the last national election in 2019 on Ramaphoria, when everyone thought that Ramaphosa was going to save the country from the evil of Zuma and radical economic transformation and corruption, they got 57% of the vote, which is more than 10 million people. The national medium turnout projection from this Ipsos poll is ANC only 45 Five percent. That's a 12% drop. And as I just described to you, that would mean millions of people who voted for the ANC in the last election not voting for them in this election. That is crazy. Remember, we've been wondering whether or not the ANC will dip below 50%, a, a simple majority for them this election. And many people up until this point, including polling, had projected that that was very unlikely. For them to drop not to 50 to 45 would be not a death knell scenario, like an apocalypse scenario, but it would be 
a cataclysmic moment for the African National Congress. The poll also projects that the DA would stay largely the same, so this wouldn't be a victory for the Democratic Alliance if they get what is projected to be 21% would be largely the same. It would be other parties that would be taking voters off the ANC or other parties doing better, DA staying the same, and lots of ANC voters just choosing not to bother to vote, not to go out and vote at all. So this Ipsos poll projects a large leap for the EFF up to 18%. It predicts that Action SA on their national debut with Herman Mashaba might get 4%, which would be a massive, massive debut. Now, as I said, based on turnout, the big parties perform better or worse. So if there's a low turnout in the coming election, the ANC, according to Ipsos and the DA, the two biggest parties are projected to do better because, as I said, they're better at getting their voters out there. But uh, the, the higher the turnout, out, and this one, as I just told you, was a medium turnout projection, the worse the ANC and the DA does. Super interesting. And if this really does come to pass, if the ANC dips not just a little below 50%, but 5%, suddenly they need a serious coalition partner who themselves, or a few of them, that have got significant numbers, and that radically changes the dynamics of South Africa's government forever. It becomes nothing we have ever seen before. Crazy. Now, here's where I tell you that all polling must be taken with a pinch of salt. We have seen how polls have got things wrong or things have changed between the polling moment and the election. And Ipsos itself is telling people this is just what we found in the data. It's not necessarily going to happen. But it is nonetheless crazy that Ipsos itself is projecting only 45% for the ANC if there's a medium voter turnout this coming election. Okay, news worth knowing story number two. You may be bored of this story right now. You may think that it's been going on since Mandela stepped out of prison and it does feel like that, but it's the court case between Vodacom and their ex-employee in the finance department whose name is Nkosana Makate, better known as the please call me guy. So if you are young and many of our viewers are under the age of 30, uh, you may not even know what a please call me is. So let me take you back in time to the beginning, in the old times, before even Mix It or Blackberry. Back in the old days, we sent text messages. You may get text messages still from your bank and you may struggle to find them in your phone because they're not on WhatsApp or any of the social media. Where even are those things? Those text messages are called SMSs and SMSs actually cost money to send, not even data. But if you didn't have enough air time to send an SMS, you couldn't communicate with people and you could only send these texts they weren't endless texts like on whatsapp that you get from your mom no it's 140 character text like old school twitter was and back in the 2000s cellular network supergiant vodacom was trying to figure out innovative ways to get people to text more because the cellular networks would make a lot of money off of SMSs, people communicating, particularly if they didn't want to do phone calls. And then a smart, enterprising, thoughtful guy from the finance department, Nkosana Makate, went to the development team and the managers and said, why don't you invent something called a please call me, a kind of SMS, which where somebody doesn't send an SMS, they type in star 140 star 082 or star 140 star and then the number of the person they're trying to reach and then hash. And then what that does is it sends a free SMS from Vodacom or just a cellular network provider to the person whose number you've put in saying that this person, the person yourself, wants you to call them a please call me. And then Vodacom is able to put advertising on that. So it will also say like, you know, buy a pizza or something within that SMS when you receive it. And that has been a revolutionary uh, technology for Vodacom. And they've earned like 70 billion Rand in revenue or more in the last 20 years from please call me's. Which is why for the last 20 years, Nkosana Makete has been in a court battle with Vodacom trying to get decent compensa compensation for his idea. Now, Vodacom has tried to undercut as much as possible Makete's role in the creation of the Please Call Me service. But unfortunately, we also have the screenshots and the documents proving that they sent what I think it's fair to say is the most expensive internal staff correspondence in history. Because they did in the 2000s release an internal staff mailer saying that they've invented this new Please Call Me service Thank you so much to Nkosana Makete from Finance, who came up with the whole idea, gave it to the development team, who put it into action, and it's immediately so successful. And Makete has been fighting for decent compensation ever since. Vodacom has been using a lot of money to try and minimize how much compensation Makete is trying to get. They even offered him a settlement to the tune of 47 million Rand uh, a little while ago, which honestly would be life-changing money. It's like a massive lottery win. Uh, but Makete has stuck to his guns very admirably and said, no, You've made 70 billion rands revenue for this service. 
I want a decent cut, not based on the 47 million, just like a cut of money, but relative to how much you've made. Because if he gets, say, a percentage of 70 billion Rand, he's not gonna be walking away with 47 million Rand. He's gonna be walking away with billions of Rands. And now the Supreme Court of Appeal has agreed with Makete that he needs to get substantial, decent, or fair compensation. And they are talking about five to 7.5% of Vodacom's revenue from the Please Call Me service, which from a 70 billion Rand in revenue is well over 4 billion Rand that Makete might get as a settlement. 4 billion Rand. He's going to become one of the richest South Africans in history, but it's going to be even more money than that because it also has to be adjusted for inflation over time, upwards of 5%, because the Rand has devalued in the last 20 years, which means that 4 billion to, you know, 5 billion Rand in 2005's money is well way more than that in today's money. Vodacom's gonna try and challenge it again. We don't know where it's gonna go from here because the Constitutional Court already ruled on this in 2016, and now the Supreme Court of Appeal has ruled on it, but yeah, looks like my care might win. And finally, the State of the Nation address is tonight. It has been marked in the past by terrible red carpets. <laughs> Just, uh, I know that the rich and famous and the politically connected want to make it like our Oscars or Met Gala, but guys, if you have any talent, it's not for fashion. Please just don't. Just don't do that. And it's also been marked for another kind of red crisis. Uh, this one is the EFF continually disrupting the State of the Nation address and protesting and repeated points of order and being forced out by security guards, storming the stage. And it looks like, although it is going to final second court rulings, they may have even been the ruling before this video comes out, but it is unclear whether or not Julius Malema and a handful of other leaders of the EFF will be allowed to attend the State of the Nation address and the budget speech later in the month at all. They might not be there tonight. We're recording on Wednesday, but tonight for you watching, if you're watching on the release day, uh, because the parliament uh, has since, national parliament has since changed its rules around disruptions and repeated points of order um, and trying to, in their words, um, knock out or affect the decorum of the houses of parliament during the state of a nation, of the nation address. And so genuinely, the EFF top brass may not even be in attendance tonight. We'll have to wait and see. And that is definitely an ongoing story that's been building for years and I'm sure we'll have more to report on it next week. Thank you so much for watching this episode of News Worth Knowing, our once a week on a Thursday look back at the biggest stories facing South Africa in the seven days before the episode releases. This is The Issue with Dan Corder. We'll be back in a few days with, a, with another big essay on Monday on one of the biggest issues facing South Africa. It'll probably be about the elections and the State of the Nation address happening tonight. Lastly, I would love it if you just gave us a subscribe wherever you are watching from if you haven't yet and go check out our Patreon, small monthly subscription, expert interviews. This one with Mbali and Tuli that we released yesterday is phenomenal. See you soon.